Before we start using these line integrals, let's just take stock of which equations we've come together with here for electricity and magnetism. We've now got four equations, and these are known very famously as Maxwell's equations. Though at the moment we don't know all the details, there's still some more to add. The first two involve surface integrals. So uh, this sign here with the circle over the integral just means complete over something. The fact that you've got dA's here tells you it's complete over area. So these two are surface integrals. Surface integral of the electric field tells you the charge inside, which is Gauss's law for electricity. Surface integral for magnetic field is zero, which is Gauss's law for magnetism. And now we have two new equations, which are line integrals. So once again, it's this integral sign with the circle, which indicates that it's a complete over something, but now it's got dLs, which means it's integral along a line rather than over an area. And for electric field, if you integrate around a circle, the net that gives you the net change of voltage, which must be zero, which is actually Kirchhoff's second law of circuits. And as it turns out, it's an incomplete version of Faraday's law as well. And then you get the same thing for magnetic fields, which is that the integral, once again, around any closed loop of magnetic field times dL tells you the amount of current that goes through that loop. And that's called Ampere's law, though it too is also a little bit incomplete at the moment. These are the four fundamental equations of electromagnetism, and we'll come back to them in somewhat great de detail later on.